We're here. What's up, YouTube? It is your Lord and Savior, King D353 here, and it is time for the results of the 2017 Elimination Chamber pay per view. Now, I'm not going to lie to all of you, I didn't care about most of this card. As a result of a combination of not caring about most of this card and trying horrifically hard to try to get enough t shirts in WWE champions to get a free two-star superstar i didn't actually pay attention to half the pay-per-view i did still watch it i was still glancing up during the matches and there were some matches i actually watched in full but my point is there isn't going to be much detail so starting with the play show we have mojo rowley versus face the facts i mean kurt harkins mojo rowley and kurt harkins had a decently competitive match they each kicked out of each other's finishers. Kurt Hawkins kicking out of Mojo Rawley's um, Samoan drop. Samoan. No, Fireman's Carry Face Buster? I think it's called a Fireman's Carry Face Buster. Oh, wait, no. That's the thing that tested. What is that called? I don't. Fireman's Carry Front Slam? We'll call it that. The fi well, he kicked out of the Fireman's Carry Front Slam. And. Mojo Rawley kicked out of Kurt Hawkins' downward spiral, because apparently that's Kurt Hawkins' finisher. The match ends with Mojo Rawley tossing Kurt Hawkins into the ropes, and on the rebound, he hits him with a, t a type of tilt-the-whirl slam, in which during the tilting part, Mojo Rawley himself actually s spun around, turning what should have been a regular slam into like a power slam, so a tilt-the-whirl power slam of sorts. One, two, three, Mojo Rowley wins. The first match of the night was Becky Lynch versus Mickey James. Not gonna lie, I did not care for this match. Of what I saw, the only spot of worth is Becky Lynch kicking out of Mickey James's lo long kiss goodnight, which has actually been renamed to the Mick Kick. So the Mick Kick is no longer a chick kick, the Mick Kick is not a long kiss goodnight. For those of you guys who don't know what the longest good night is, it's a roundhouse kick to the back of the head. A spinning roundhouse kick to the back of the head. But, yeah, that's now called the Mick Kick. She hits Becky Lynch with it, and Becky Lynch kicks out. Also, Mickey James was working Becky's arm for the majority of the match, so when Mickey James kicked out of the Bexploder, they blamed that on Becky's bad arm, not allowing her to pin her correctly. Ultimately, in the end, Becky Lynch wins by roll-up. However, I cannot tell you what she reversed to do to roll-up because I wasn't paying attention near the end. <laughs> so, yeah. Mickey James loses to Becky Lynch. So, Mickey James has lost literally all of her matches since returning. Literally everyone. Even to Asuka. I don't know where to go with Mickey James after this. The next match of the night was the Tag Team Turmoil match. The Tag Team Turmoil match starts off with Heath Slater and Rhino, Beauty and the Man Beast, versus the Fashion Police, Tyler Breeze, and Fandango. And they had a pretty competitive match, actually. The Fashion Police really took it to Heath. I really like that they did a double super kick to the sides of Heath's head, so basically got sandwiched by super kicks. That, I thought, was a good move to be used as a finisher, but eh. They go for a pin and Heath kicks out, because Heath is Heath. And basically, they just beat the holy out of Heath Slater for a good, good while. I don't know how often Rhino was in the match, because for the first portion of this match, I was still into my game. But then I realized, wait, no, I actually care about this match. I'm going to put down my phone and pay attention. <laughs> so, um, the match actually ends with Tyler Breeze out of commission. And Heath Slater manages to tag Rhino in. But Fandango didn't see it. So Fandango rolls up Heath Slater, hoping to get a pin, but Heath tagged out. Rhino gets in the ring, gets ready for a spear, 
Fandango, after arguing with the ref for a bit, turns around, speared out of his fucking boots. One, two, three. Down goes Fandango. With Fandango out for the count, the VOD villains come in, and the VOD villains beat the holy fuck out of Rhino on the outside of the ring, slam him into the barricade, Rhino is down, Heath Slater dives like a champ from the top of the apron for beautiful crossbody, I know it sounds like I'm hyping it up because it's Heath Slater, but honestly the move did look beautiful. Heath then throws Rhino into the ring in their corner climbs into the ring, tags himself in, and then he reaches out to pull Simon Gotts into the ring, but then Aiden English attacks Heath from behind. Aiden English and Simon Gotts beat Heath down, and they go for That's a Rap. For those of you guys who know what That's a Rap is, it's technically Aiden English's finisher, the Swan Tom Bomb, but there's oh, their tag team move is also called That's a Rap. Then the tag team version, the the senton bomb happens after Simon Gotch hits a rolling, not a rolling senton, a rolling, a rolling fireman's carry? I don't know the name of the move. Wow, how did I forget the name of that move? Oh god, I've lost all my wrestling knowledge. Mauro Ronaldo has literally sapped all the knowledge out of me. Damn you, Mauro, damn you! Point is, they go for Bats of Rap. Rolling Fireman's Carry, that's what I'm going to call it. Only for Rhino to take him, take out Simon Gotch afterwards and then immediately leave the ring. As he leaves the ring, Aiden Inglis goes for his swanton on Heath, but Heath rolls out the ring, and Aiden Inglis turns around only to get hit with Heath's Implanter DDT. One, two, three. Heath Slater and Rhino have now defeated two tag teams. The Usos then come in, and Heath Slater looks like he's dead. Dude could barely stand, but he, him and Rhino are just looking out there, standing tall, staring at the Usos as they come to the ring. The match starts. Heath starts off in front of Uso. They have a little back and forth before Heath pulls him back into the corner of Rhino. Rhino tags in. Rhino punches into the Uso. Rhino starts beating up the Usos before the Usos gain the advantage over Rhino. I forgot how. But Rhino manages to hot tag in Heath, and Heath goes for a tear, beating down the Usos until one Uso manages to get a blind tag. Heath then goes for a roll up on an U on that Uso, an O'Connor roll roll up to be specific. Why am I naming off moves? I'm trying to seem important and smart, aren't I? Anyway, he O'Connor rolls an Uso, only for the U other Uso to super kick him since he didn't know that he tagged in. One, two. Free the Usos eliminate Beauty and the Man Beast. American Alpha comes out. I cannot for life of me remember what happens during their match. Point is American Alpha Oh right, I remember why I don't remember now. Because the thing cut out near the end of their match. The thing cut out, my brother was trying to fix it, and in the meantime I'm like, by the time you turn that back on, the Usos are gonna be eliminated. And guess what? By the time he turned it back on, the Usos were eliminated. But the Usos were also beating the holy hell out of American Alpha. Uso splash to Chad Yable. Jason Jordan's on the out- Actually, no, Uso splash to Jason Jordan. And Chad Gable is just dead on the outside of the ring. I don't know what the hell they did to Chad Gable, but dear god, he looked dead. <laughs> that aside... They're dead, and the Ascension come to the ring. The Ascension immediately get in the ring. They pick up Jason Jordan, hit him with ends of days. One, not end of days, fall of man. One, two, oh my god, it gets broken up by Chad Gable. They beat down on Jason Jordan for a bit. But then the, the uh, American Alpha makes a comeback. I do not remember most of this comeback. All I remember is at the end of this comeback, Jason Jordan pulls one of the Ascension out of the ring. No, Chad Gable pulls one of the Ascension out of the ring and then hops up quick enough to be tagged in and then hit Grand Altitude. One, two, three. American Alpha retains their title. 
And then we move on to a handicap match that actually happened before this match, but I forgot to mention it. This handicap match was between Dolph Ziggler versus Kalisto and Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews comes out first, and then as Kalisto's coming out, Dolph attacks from behind, clotheslining Kalisto in the back of the head, and then launching Kalisto into the um, banner entrance thing. I guess I'll call it the Titan Tron. He throws him into the Titan Tron. Dolph then goes in the ring. He fights with out Apollo Crews. It was just a basic back and forth affair. Dolph gains the advantage, but then he gets distracted because Kalisto is coming back to the ring. Kalisto is apparently really badly hurt from that one throw into the Titan Tron that Dolph did. And he's holding his stomach. He can barely move. Kalisto's dragging his body to the ring. <laughs> He finally gets up onto the apron, and Apollo Crews insinguries Dolph Ziggler. Kalisto finds his way back into the match. Dolph and Kalisto have a back and forth. Kalisto tags out without Dolph's noticing. Dolph takes out Kalisto, only for Apollo Crews to lift him from behind. Spin out Powerbomb, one, two, three. Apollo Crews and Kalisto defeat Dolph Ziggler. Afterwards, though, Dolph goes ahead and attacks both Apollo Crews and Kalisto. But Apollo Crews gets the worst of it, as Dolph Ziggler uses a chair to shatter Apollo Crews' ankle. Well, presumably shatter his ankle. He put his ankle in between the chair, and then stepped on the legs to essentially snap to, to vice grip his ankle twice. The next match of the night was Nikki Bella versus Natalia. I'm not going to do a play for play by play for this one, but basically the match was full of submission moves galore. Nikki Bella was really trying to be a submission specialist this match. Near the end of it, both women were brawling on the outside and it ended in a count out victory. Me and my brother were got, then got into an argument over whether or not their next match is going to be a submissions match or a false count anywhere match. It better be a submissions match. <laughs> that aside, the next match of the night is Na Naomi versus Alexa Bliss. Naomi misses a split leg and mood salt. Alexa misses Twisted Bliss. Naomi kicks out of a snap DDT that Locke's been using as a finisher recently. Alexa gets Naomi back in position for Twisted Bliss. She goes for it only to get knees to her face. And then, in the worst done spot ever, Naomi goes to do her split leg moonsault. Alexa's halfway across the ring. Alexa is rolling like a mad woman to get into position while Naomi's in mid split leg and moonsault. And she ends up kneeing Alexa Bliss in the gut. And then get, she does the pin. One, two, three. Naomi is your new SmackDown Women's Champion. I don't know what Naomi was aiming for. I don't know why Alexa Bliss was rolling like her life depended on to get hit by that move. Oh wait, I do know why. The point is though, in kayfabe, that was stupidly done. It was horribly done. But doesn't matter. In the end, Naomi is your new SmackDown Women's Champion. Now for the match that I actually cared about and was looking quite forward to. The Elimination Chamber, with these six men before you. Baron Corbin, Dean Ambrose, John Cena, the face that runs the place, the eater of worlds, and The Miz. <laughs> John Cena and AJ Styles start off the match. They have a quick back and forth, and as Cena's about to go for the five knuckle shuffle, you can't see me. Dean Ambrose comes into the ring. Dean Ambrose then dominates both John Cena and AJ Styles, knocking them both into the steel sides of the ring. 
hitting AJ Styles with a suplex into a power bomb. I am not saying the actual name of that move because I don't know what the hell it's actually called. And in the le in the most casual jump off a top of a top of the chamber ever. Dean gets up on top of a pod and elbow drops Johnson, and nobody goes, Oh my god, that's insane! I mean, they did, but not in the way they normally do, so... Yeah, Dean's just like, I'm just gonna casually jump on on Cena. But yeah, Dean dominates the two for a bit. They finally regain the advantage on Dean when AJ Styles and Dean start... Uh, waist-locking each other from behind and swapping spots over and over again. And then, as... AJ Styles tries to German suplex Dean, and Dean clings to the rope for dear life. John Cena grabs AJ Styles from behind, and German suplexes both AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose. The next person to come to the ring is Bray Wyatt. Bray cleans house for a bit, including launching Dean Ambrose into the, um, chamber walls. Then Baron Corbin comes into the match, and then the TV cuts off again. When the TV comes back on, Baron Corbin has been eliminated by Dean Ambrose, presumably by roll-up, and Baron Corbin is beating the holy hell out of Dean. Hits him with the end of days, Miz finally gets out of his pod, Miz pins Dean Ambrose, Dean Ambrose is eliminated. Miz then has the most dominant section of his entire goddamn career, as he starts beating down on Cena, AJ, and Bray Wyatt. For the first time ever, he actually completes the yes kicks, but rather than actually kicking someone in the head, as he yes kicks between John Cena and Bray Wyatt, he ends off with a double drop kick, hitting both men. Afterwards, he gets everybody in a corner, and he does a running drop kick to literally everyone. Also, he gave hit AJ the yes kicks while he was in the corner as well. With everybody drop kicked down to hell, he then corner clotheslines John Cena. Bray Wyatt then pulls him down as he's about to go for his axe handle, but the Miz ends up slow crushing finale in Bray Wyatt. Miz gets back on the top rope. Dives at Cena for a crossbody, only for Cena to hoist him up in the air, AA him, 1, 2, 3, The Miz is eliminated. John Cena is then teamed up on by Bray and AJ, who beat the holy hell out of him. Sorry, I just had a brain fart moment because I'm trying to remember when certain spots happened. But yeah, they team up on Cena, some more back and forth action happens. There's a point where Cena drops off, jumps off of the cell to take out both Bray and AJ Styles. I'm still not sure if he was going for a double clothesline or a crossbody, but whatever he did, it looked like he just crashed into AJ and he clotheslined Bray Wyatt. That aside, Cena kicks out of AJ Styles' Styles Clash, Styles kicks out John Cena's AA, one point Cena hits them both with a five knuckle shuffle at the same time. Cena picks up Bray Wyatt to go for the attitude adjustment. Bray Wyatt pulls himself down, hits a Cena for Sister Abigail. One, two, three. John Cena is eliminated, and we now have AJ Styles versus Bray Wyatt. AJ Styles throws everything he has at Bray Wyatt. 450 splashes and whatever the heck his combination is called, I can't remember. AJ Styles then goes to finish it off with the Phenomenal Forearm, only for Bray Wyatt to catch the Phenomenal Forearm into a Sister Abigail, and I called it before it happened, but you guys didn't see that because you weren't there, but I called it, he hits AJ with the Sister Abigail, one, two, three, Bray Wyatt is finally your WWE World Heavyweight Champion. I should have been hip swiveling that entire time I said that. But yes, Bray finally has a belt. Calm down, Marks. It has finally happened. Your hero has his belt. Now stop bitching. But yeah, Bray won. It was spectacular. I love that Elimination Chamber match. And as Bray said, with his title, Randy Orton comes out. Randy Orton stares down the ring at Bray. Bray stares down at Randy. And then Ran Bray Wyatt poses. And it dawned on everybody at WrestleMania, it's going to be Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. Which I'm pretty sure everybody and their mother called. 
but it's still happening and it's still glorious. Pay-per-view as a whole, although I was not interested in it, I must admit, there were still some good matches. Mojo Rawley vs. Kurt Atkins was a surprisingly competitive match. Mickey vs. Becky? It, 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 it was okay. Dolph vs. Apollo Crews and Kalisto was also a pretty okay match. I like how they went about doing it. I was afraid they were going to somehow bullshit and have Dolph beat them both, even though they couldn't even beat one of them. But how they did it was very good. How they did it was very good. Um... Tag Team Turmoil. I loved seeing Heath and Rhino be dominant again. I loved it so much. I'm not so keen on the ending because watching the bad... No, watching the good guys come back from a bloody pulp is cliched. Plus, it kind of buries the momentum you gave the Ascension. Like, what was the point of making the Ascension look so good last week if you're just going to have them lose to a barely functioning Chad Gable and Jason Jordan? Nanny and Nikki put on a surprisingly good match. Natalia and Alexa, it was an entertaining-ish match. I don't care for them personally, but they put on a decent show. And the Elimination Chamber, mm, beautiful match. Be beautiful. Mm, 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 mm. Delicious. Nutritious, delicious match. So, yeah, that was the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. It was boring at first, but it really picks up speed as it goes on, and it, it, it was a different show overall. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little recap of the pay-per-view. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will be seeing you guys tomorrow. Adeuces, YouTube.